The story of Diego Tristan is an all-too-common tale, one that has beset numerous players across the eras of football. Aptly nicknamed the Lizard for his slippery style of play, most notably when dribbling. The Spanish striker was once amongst the hottest properties in world football, enjoying his best years with Deportivo during the start of the century. Tristan achieved cult status during his time with the Galician outfit and became a talisman throughout the club's golden years. However, the career of the talented forward took a sharp downturn after he left Deportivo. Despite Tristan's troubled later career, he was an integral part of an impressive and dynamic side at Depor. He proved himself as one of the most talented strikers in the world as his goals helped the club to win the Copa del Rey in 2002, the Supercopa in 2002, and less so in the memorable journey to the 2004 Champions League semi-final. Let's start from the beginning. Tristan began his career with Real Betis B-side before moving to Mallorca, where he made his name in Spain's top flight. 18 goals and 35 appearances for Mallorca during the 1999-2000 La Liga season captured the attention of Spain's top clubs. Real Madrid's president at the time, Lorenzo Sanz, moved quickly to secure the services of Tristan after his breakthrough season with Mallorca. However, after a regime change in the upper echelons at the Bernabeu, Florentino Perez took the presidential throne and the Tristan deal was never finalized. A dream move to one of Spain's top two subsequently fell through. After the failed transfer to Madrid, Deportivo entered the market and secured the Spaniard at the cut price of £8 million. It would turn out to be a fantastic piece of business for President Augusto César Linduaro. Tristan had developed into the complete number 9, possessing strength, skill and flair. He had the ability to score all types of goals and his talent became recognized at the highest domestic level. At the time the Galicians were already blessed with one of Europe's top strikers, Dutchman Roy Mackay. Tristan would need to be outstanding to oust the hitman in order to fit into the club's sole striker formation. A situation often fixed when the two played up front together. When it worked, it was an unstoppable combination. One thing's for sure, if there was a bevy of betting offers like there is now, there would have been some rich punters. Despite often being reduced to the role of backup, Tristan still netted an impressive 19 goals as Deportivo finished second to a resurgent Real Madrid in the league. Whilst many clubs were well of his baggage, it didn't stop Europe's elite sides from tracking him with the offer of first-team football. The 2001-2002 season however saw the skillful striker become the club's first choice, claiming the La Liga top scorer award come the season end with 21 goals, as well as six goals in the Champions League in what would be his most prolific campaign. Accompanied by Juan Carlos Valeron, Jalman, Fran and Depor's myriad of other attacking options, Tristan was instrumental in victories over Manchester United and Arsenal in the first and second group stages of the Champions League that season. His brace at Old Trafford took Depor to the top of their group, displaying all the flair and skill which had attracted the likes of Madrid as he put United to the sword in a 3-2 victory in October 2001. The Spaniard capped his most successful season as he was awarded the Pichichi Trophy for finishing La Liga's top scorer in 2002. Lauded as the long-awaited strike partner for Raul, a call-up to the Spanish national side for that summer's World Cup in South Korea and Japan soon followed. Replicating the success of 2002 would be a tough task for Tristan and in the following two seasons, the Spaniard's form would begin to diminish. A combination of injuries hit the striker hard and his form dipped after the World Cup. An ankle injury picked up at the tournament and a torn thigh muscle mid-season would seriously affect Tristan's form that year. However, rumors still circulated of a possible transfer to Manchester United even after a reckless tackle on Red Devils star David Beckham saw the Spaniard hit the headlines in the British press for the wrong reason. The forward himself dismissed any talk of transfer away from Depor, saying, The only thing I am thinking about is playing for my club. Any other reports do not concern me. United are a team who I like. For me they are one of the favourites to be in contention. Tristan's heroics in Europe and 19 La Liga goals during 2002-2003 kept him near the head of the European watch list. The 2003-2004 season was the pinnacle of Depor's golden era as they toppled several of Europe's heavyweights to reach the Champions League semi-final in a season that epitomized the club's attacking football philosophy. The departure of Roy Mackay to Bayern Munich for 19 million euros in 2003 should have opened the door for Tristan to make the role of star forward his own and take his career to the next level. It was this season that should have been Tristan's moment in the sun. However, injuries and loss of confidence blighted it. Deportivo would claim the greatest win in their history that year when the side overturned a 4-1 first-leg deficit against AC Milan. To claim an outrageous 4-0 win in the return leg, Tristan however, painfully never really played a part in it. The Spaniard would not exert the same influence in 2004 as he had done against the likes of Manchester United and Arsenal in 2001. 
He made nine appearances in Depor's most famous European campaign, scoring three goals, but it seemed his powers were beginning to wane. The hero of 2004 was not Diego Tristan as it could well have been, but a mix of Albert Luke and Walter Pandiani who shared the goal-scoring burden. Both scored crucial goals against Juventus in the last 16 and then in that famous quarter-final comeback over AC Milan to overshadow a beleaguered Tristan. It was an opportunity missed by the Spaniard in Depor's last great European adventure. Had Tristan exhibited the promising form of 2002, there may have been a different outcome to the Champions League that year. Diego Tristan scored an excellent 78 goals and 177 league appearances for the club. He was the definition of a confidence player. When on form and at full fitness he was one of the best forwards in the world, scoring a variety of goals as an out-and-out -out striker or as a deeper, creative forward. Tristan's off-field problems were also well documented, and his champagne lifestyle led to a bust-up with Javier Irreta as he slowly fell out of favor. The Depor manager became increasingly frustrated with his striker's attitude, referring to Diego's flippant lifestyle with a quote that turned out to be bang on the money. The striker was seen out on the town the night before an important match against Real Madrid, to which Irreta swiftly dropped him. Tristan is lucky that he is an intelligent boy and he has natural qualities as a footballer, but I'm worried that all the advice I'm giving him may only sink in when he's 40. I'm not going to turn into a policeman and guard his every move. No player should be out at night 24 hours before a match against Madrid. This can never be in a team of mine. The big money move to Manchester United or Real Madrid never materialized and, after leaving the Riazor in 2006, Tristan's downfall began to snowball. A return to Majorca failed to reignite the striker's fading career closely followed by a move to Italy and Livorno in 2007 and then West Ham United in 2008. The Spaniard threatened to show some of his former flair with the hammers under Gianfranco Zola but his only meaningful contribution was a powerful and precise free kick against Stoke City in December 2008. Released in 2009, Tristan found himself in the last chance saloon at Cadiz, in the Spanish Segunda Division, where he ended his career in 2010 at the age of 37. Perhaps the tale of Diego Tristan is just another all-too-familiar story of a naturally gifted footballer plagued by injury, fragile confidence and a taste for the high life. All of the above held him back from becoming a truly world-class player for club and country in a career bereft of greatness. Despite the Spaniards' problems, there are legendary goals that stand out from Tristan's peak. The divine show of individual skill and composure in the moment of pure genius would come to define his time with Deportivo during the club's golden era and reminds us just how good he was. Now, I want to know what do you think about Diego Tristan in the comments. And also, if you liked it, please don't forget to subscribe below.